How's it going? It wouldn't be right if my Good. camera didn't clap out two minutes before we go on the air, right? I, no, I think you look great. It's like a Cheech and Chong movie. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, tonight we've got I, Mike Lichty and Team Ez coming on. Um, Adam, you talk for a second and I'm going to reconnect here. Yeah, do what you got to do. A couple of well-traveled racers. Mike Lichty, of course. Uh, second generation race car driver from Ontario. He's raced super modifieds all over the Northeast. We watched his video attempting to break the uh, speed record at Bristol Motor Speedway. So I'm sure he's going to have lots to share. I have no idea what we can expect from Team Ez, but I imagine that'll be a good time later on. And every week we talk about this now and then. We have a group chat, Spencer, Clint, and I. And normally there's quite a bit of chatter back and forth. A topic will come about and we'll all share opinions, share our thoughts. This week, it's basically been nothing but Clint adding things that I think we're either going to watch or talk about during the show. I make it a point not to look at anything because I'd like to be surprised on the show. It's really not fair to Clint. If I get a chance to plan the type of things I want to say, it's it's not fair. So I like to come in cold and uh, see things for the first time as he sees them. Is that, is that about right, Clint? I can't hear Clint. Okay, no audio for Clinton, so back to the drawing board, but I do see Mike Lichty is here. Uh, if you want, Spencer, let's go straight into Mike Lichty. We'll let Clint get, get back up and running and get him here, but if Mike's ready to come on, go ahead and throw him up. It looks like it's a really small screen. I don't know if he's in the race shop or where he's at, but we'll ask him that when he comes on. Should be a fun conversation. There he is. Mike Lichty, welcome to the show. Can you hear us okay, Mike? Hey, all right, a little me. bit of audio trouble with me. There we go. Now we got you. Can you hear me all right? I got you. Awesome. Where where is that is that the race shop you're in, Mike? I am. Nice. Talk about preparation this year. This is a little bit different. What are we getting ready for? Oh, uh, well, right now we're uh, we're trying to get the super modifieds all uh all ready for the opening show June first at Oswego uh, Speedway, and then uh, we're uh, we're gonna do a little uh, winged uh, dirt sprint car racing also. So uh, we're gonna be ready for uh, the test and tune here May first at uh, Schwiegen, and then uh, following week, uh, from my understanding, there's another open practice, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll be there for the opener on uh, on the seventeenth. Mike, you're a pretty young dude for the amount of experience that you have. Going fast is not an issue for you. What brought on the desire to want to try dirt racing? Uh, I think primarily just, uh, you know, getting sick of the traveling with uh, with Isma and whatnot. I've been doing that for, oh, I want to say, close to uh, probably 15 years now. Uh, so being 40 minutes from home. You know, Friday night racing, get done work at five o'clock and then uh, head to a Schwiegen and uh, and try to do some local racing. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be uh, uh, a different ball game. I mean, no expectations and whatnot, but uh, but I'm really looking forward to it. I know you've got some friends attached to this part of the sport, Bobby Slack, Ryan Coney. And what sort of advice have you got? Have you asked for any advice? I have Ryan. Uh, I, I mean, he's been somewhat helpful and whatnot. Bobby Slack says, uh, I'm an idiot. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, Sounds like Bob. He, he, yeah, he's a modified guy. Uh, not really a fan of wing sprint cars, but uh, I'm the kind of guy that just needs to get uh, as much seat time as possible. And uh, if I'm not comfortable, I'm not going to put myself in any stupid situation. So uh, I just need to get out there and make laps and, uh, and and get comfortable. And looking at my age, I mean, I'm turning 37 on uh, Saturday, I guess it would be. So uh, I'm probably a little late to start uh, in the dirt world. I, I kind of, you know, looking at it, wish I would have started a little sooner. But uh, hey, I'm uh, I'm up for the challenge. Like we've seen lots of other drivers who come out of pavement ranks, uh, like you know 
Mac Demands come out. A lot of these other young guys, they've been able to transition fairly well. Certainly not at the speed you're used to with the Supers. You know, uh, do you think anything is going to work for you that you can bring over? Uh, I don't think speed's a factor. Uh, I mean, the sprint cars are power to weight ratio. I mean, I would put them in comparison to the Supers, uh, you know, at some point. Uh, definitely not, not the torque level and whatnot, but uh, I mean... I have never been on dirt uh, it is, as far as anything I've ever ran up until uh, last September where we, we screwed around at uh, Humberstone a couple nights. So uh, it's definitely different. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Mike, you've raced at a lot of racetracks. And, and as we said, you're used to going fast. We watched your speed record attempt at Bristol Motor Speedway last week on the show. What's the fastest you've ever felt in a race car? What what place could you really feel that you're hauling the mail? I would say probably for us, uh, Thompson Speedway. Uh, it's a big five eights. The uh, the straightaways are crazy, crazy long, uh, and we're probably somewhere I would say in the neighborhood of, you know, high one sixties, uh, low one seventies at the end of the straightaway. Uh, and being so long, those straightaways of the, the car kind of, you know, really at the end of the straightaway, the stagger takes over and, uh, it kind of upsets the, uh, the race car at the end of the straightaways. But, uh, Bristol was, Bristol was quick. Uh, I, I would, you know, I would compare that to, uh, to Toledo in, in Ohio, what we've ran with the supers and whatnot, but your corner speed, uh, you know, it didn't fall off from, from what the straightaway speed was, right? So, uh, yeah, I would, I would probably say, you know, Thompson for for full full speed, straightaway speed would probably be the quickest. Uh, Oswego's a very fast place, especially with the steel uh, inside barrier, steel outside wall also. Uh, and, and it just kind of tunnels yourself in down the straightaway, the front straightaway. It's really narrow and whatnot. Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, the, the Supers are, are awesome race cars. There's uh, there's a lot that goes into them. And that was one thing, too, why I kind of really wanted to, you know, get involved with sprint car racing as I, I've been building these things and involved with the Supers for, you know, ever since I've been eight, nine years old. And uh, we hand build basically everything. And it's kind of nice to... Uh, go over to the race shop and open up a catalog and order some parts. <laughs> a lot of other racers are wishing it was the other way that they could go back to making the stuff themselves. So uh, you're, you're on that one side. Mike, let's talk about the Bristol. You know, we uh, showed it last week. How did that come together? Was there prize money? How many cars? What, just tell us a little bit about how that whole thing went down. No, so th there was no prize money. We got a phone call uh, probably – Two months prior to that happening uh, from the president of ISMA at the time, Howie Lane, and uh, he asked if we'd be interested to go to uh, to Bristol to try to put on uh, what they called was like a world speed record. And they had a couple different uh, different forms of racing there. So they had a guy in, uh, on a street bike, a two-wheeled street bike, trying to set, uh, set a record. Brian Clausen was there with, uh, with a non-wing uh, USAC asphalt sprint car. And then we had one other super modified there, and then Jason Blonde was there with the uh, the winged uh, the wing sprint car. And we went down there Friday. We made some laps. Uh, had to adjust the car, you know, tremendously from from our setup. How we showed up there, you know, our our normal ride heights probably range from somewhere in around three and a half to three and three quarters in the rear. And by the end of Friday night, we were like seven inches <laughs> so uh big big changes and then we went out there saturday they probably gave us i want to say somewhere around two hours of uh of track time saturday uh to try to come up with the uh with the fastest uh the fastest lap and i'm actually looking at the uh looking at a sign right now i think we were 13 two, six, seven, and i want to say blonde was a 13 two, four, seven or something so it was uh it was right there it was a fun experience. Uh, if we ever had a, you know, opportunity to go back, I'd, I'd definitely take them up on it. Think you could grab the record yes. this time? 
I, I think now, knowing what we know, obviously, uh, and, and y- you know, we ran a try, uh, try stage wing there, so we had a lot of downforce, uh, a lot of drag too. Uh, so, you know, to go back there, knowing what I know now, uh, I'd make some changes, and I think uh, we'd be very, uh, very competitive. And we were very competitive with the sprint car. But in saying that, I think the sprint cars have got a lot quicker too over the years. I, I was going to ask, Mike, what should be the fastest car in any track? Pick the track, but what what should be the fastest race car in a closed oval? I mean, I I don't know. I I, w- I would say they're 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 so they're so close. Power to weight ratio. You have a, a no, or, or a sprint car with you know call it a four ten. You got to be somewhere a hair over 900 pounds and they probably weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 1600 pounds, 1550 pounds. We're 1850 with the supers, uh, a hair over 900 horsepower too, but you got to look at our, our top wings. I mean, our top wings are substantially bigger than theirs. They produce way more downforce than theirs. Uh, so it's hard to say. Uh, and I don't think in any form of racing, and I look at the sprint cars and whatnot, I mean, speed is one factor, but, you know, when you start getting into uh, how the cars handle with mechanical grip and everything, it's not all, all just about, you know, true speed. You know what? That's a great point, and I don't want to offend. I've always preferred super modifieds without the wings. Like, to me, the best supers were in the 1980s at Oswego. Like, I could watch that forever much less downforce than the isma what why did you focus more on on wing cars and not going down to oswego earlier in your career uh that's just primarily uh you know dad was always involved with isma uh you know he's he's been traveling with isma you know uh, essentially since the inception of isma and uh you know, we, we I had Dave McKnight as, as a teammate for, for many years, and I grew up, you know, around Dave and, and Dad in the race shop, helping out and, and traveling at all these races. And uh, when Dad decided to step out of the seat, um, you know, I stepped in, and, and we just kind of continued on with the ISMA. And now in saying that, uh, you know, I have had a, the opportunity to run uh, some non-wing stuff and very good equipment. I ran for John Nacocher, which is Otto Siddeley's car owner, for, uh, for a couple of years, and... Uh, and had some success and whatnot, but I, I, you know, everybody has asked me that, and I really don't have any interest to to travel down to Oswego and and run, you know, the, the same track, you know, every Saturday night. And I shouldn't say that because I plan on doing that, you know, on dirt at Oswego. <laughs> but we get it, we get it. Uh, so, hey, yeah, just kind of dad, dad got out and uh, and I got in, and and, and that was actually. You know, back in the day when we had a lot of help in the in the garage and whatnot, the traveling was just as much fun as the racing. You know, and then w- when the crew kind of started to, uh, d- d- you know, not really fall apart, but you know, people have been involved with it for twenty twenty five years. They they wanted a change, and and they kind of got burnt out of it. Uh, you know, leaving for a Thursday to run a double header you know, 12 hours away, you only can do that for so many years, right? So, uh, yeah, just dad got out, I got in, and uh, and we uh, we continue to do, uh, to stay with the wing stuff and do the ISMA deal. So it, it's worked out two championships later and uh, and a lot of fun. You know, uh, Brad, your dad was, you know, we got to meet him when he was with Gary running Cube at the time when they tried to keep that going in Jukasa. Yep. How much time did you spend there at those years? When your dad had a piece. Oh, I was. I, I remember the day when uh, when Dad purchased that that track. Uh, they pulled me out of. I was still in public school, and I had a phone call from the principal to come down to the office. And I, I had no idea what was going on. I thought maybe there was a death in the family or something. And Dad said, uh, "Get in. We're going for a ride." And uh, he, uh, him, and Mom were in the uh, in the vehicle and drove out to Cayuga. And he says, uh, "Well, we're buying a racetrack." <laughs> So from that day on, I spent a lot of time in the, uh, in the grandstands, uh, replacing, uh, replacing grandstand boards. That was, uh, that was tiring, (laughs) but, uh, looking back at it, it, it's, it's a pretty phenomenal accomplishment for, for, for what he's done. And, 
you know, to to put the races on that he did, especially when he brought up Tony Stewart and, you know, Matt Kenseth and all that, those guys. I still want to say that that I, I do believe holds a record to uh, the largest short track crowd on a, you know, a single event in uh, in Canada. So it was uh, a, a pretty proud moment. It was a proud now you likely don't even know this, but it was a proud moment for Clint and I as well, because that, that opened the door to a lot of opportunities. Clint and I being able to work pit road for that weekend. hundred percent. You guys were there. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That was our call to the big leagues. Yeah, there you go. Right on. <laughs> so Mike getting into this season, you know, what's the biggest thing that worries you getting into the sprint cars? You know, you, you got, you got a big learning curve ahead. You know, what's a guy like Dave McKnight telling you? Who's giving you the best advice now? Uh, really, no, I haven't I haven't talked to anybody that's ran. I mean, I, I'm very good friends with Ryan Conium. Uh, and Ryan has struggled up here at Oshwegan. Uh, You know, he's had some success in the 360s down in, in Michigan and whatnot. But I, I just, I don't think he does it, you know, week in and week out to be extremely competitive up here uh at, at a shwig and i mean he's got great speed during the day and whatnot and i think uh just some things get lost come uh come heat race and feature time but uh i just want i just need to get comfortable i need seat time uh and that's primarily what i what i'm looking to gain obviously the first two weekends out in the test and tune and whatnot uh expectations i i really don't know uh obviously i want to be competitive i I, you know we didn't put this whole package together not to be competitive uh so it's hard to say i'm i'm not you know the last thing i want to go out there and and look like an idiot you know and being a pavement racer and and no dirt experience i mean that could be a a very good possibility so (laughs) you know but but i think i just need uh, i need laps 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 and i'm the kind of guy till i get comfortable in something i'm i'm not going to overstep my boundaries and whatnot because that's where mistakes happen and i grew up building all all my stuff in in the race shop here and, and the last thing you know especially running the super stuff was uh crashing things and coming home and then having to repair them and i've been one that that doesn't hurt equipment so i i know dirt's different i mean they do a lot of flipping and shit but (laughs) you know (laughs) it happens it happens but i mean that's just part of it mike how much super modified racing are you going to do this year what's what's the balance going to be so i think i the schedule has been downsized probably in the last uh well, well, ever since COVID, you know, we, we haven't seen schedules like, like we did pre-COVID and whatnot. So I think they got around 12, uh, 12 races on the schedule. Uh, I'm not going to run anything uh, far, far east like New Hampshire and Maine and that thing or that, that, that stuff. So I think I'm going to probably do somewhere in the neighborhood of six to eight super shows and then uh, primarily focus on, on the sprint car. So we... Uh, we've invested a lot of time in, in this sprint car deal and whatnot, and I want to get competitive and I want to get good at it. So I think the more I run it, obviously, uh, will dictate, um, uh, how, uh, how I perform. I, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a follow up here, Mike. D- do you want to know, or do you just want to go in? Do you want to know what almost every pavement racer does when they come and race sprint cars, or do you just want to <laughs> clean slate and go out there? Uh, just sh- shoot it at me. I mean, I've I've heard some horror stories with some people, but <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I like I said, I really wish that I I really wish I grew up on dirt because I think the transition would be a lot easier from dirt to pavement than than the yeah. route I'm going. I think that's fair. The best pavement racers that come over to dirt, they all point the car into the corner. And dirt, you okay. can't. You got to you got to charge it in. To the outside, yeah. like you're used to turning left to go into the corner. You've got to keep going until you're almost off the racetrack. That's where the speed is. And if yeah. you watch, you can see, and I'm talking about great pavement racers that, that have come over and, and joined sprint car racing. They're super smooth. They stay a lot closer to the inside wall than they do the outside wall. So those are the things I, I think if you watch a little bit, you'll you'll figure it out pretty quick. 
I have, you know, I've, I, and I, I learned a, a, a whack when we went down to Humberstone. So we went down there twice last year. Uh, the first time Steve Moulton uh, actually came down and kind of gave, gave us a hand and whatnot and stepped us in a little bit of the right direction because this is all new to us, right? Uh, and the first time out in the car, I mean, nobody really told me anything to expect what to do. And I came in and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, if this, what this shit's like, I don't know if I want to do it. <laughs> but uh, got, got out there and, and you know, got, got more laps and, and felt more comfortable. And then the second time we went down, Ryan had came down with us, Conium. And uh, I, I actually... I actually was was fairly comfortable, and I wouldn't say 100% comfortable in it because I think that's going to take some time. Uh, but I, I think we'll be okay. You know, that's basically how I can leave. And I, I'm not going to say, you know, we're going to go out there and, and we're going to compete, you know, and, and run top five, do whatever. I, I have no idea. So I'll let you know after the first test soon. <laughs> you're you're going to be fine, Mike, because once you get on the track with another car and they're probably going to be a little faster than you, You'll be pissed off enough that the second time out, you'll be yeah, whatever exactly. they do yeah, point. to be fast is what you're going to do. But that's, and that's the fun part about watching racers figure it out. And we go back, what, Keith Dempster, Steve Lyons, the newer breed like Darren Dryden, people that have come over from the pavement side and really excelled. Once you figure it out, you figure it out. But uh, a race I hope is a so. Racer. It's, it's going to be a learning curve. And uh, I just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take it race by race. And like I said, I just want to get as much seat time in it as possible uh, and be comfortable. And, and there's one thing about being comfortable, you know, by yourself on the track. And then there's another thing about being comfortable with 24 other guys sliding in front of you and you can't see a thing. And so it, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> right on, Mike. We're happy to have you as part of the field this year. It's going to be exciting to bring over your personality and your experience to the Osh Week side of things. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, Get ready, because I know you want seat time, but you get three laps, we throw you to the wolves, <laughs> learn to fight, learn to live, or die. That's how it works out there, you know? I'm looking so forward to it. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Awesome. Okay. Thanks Anytime, for stopping guys. by, Mike. Good to see you. It's great, Adam. You know, we've been – I guess that's one of the things I'm most proud of as the manager of Ushbeek and Speedway through the crates and how they've kind of grown the 360s, you know, to bring in all these guys coming in from the other these other places have been just been amazing and astounding. And, you know, we're not out soliciting them. So when they're choosing it, it's it's a great honor for us. So to have a guy like Mike and, of course, his dad, Brad, a Canadian legend out with us is going to be fantastic. Yeah. The Lichty family is a big deal, right, in our sport. And they had every opportunity. Hell, Gary Evans was involved in Cayuga Speedway with the Lichty family, and that didn't draw them out. So great to see them getting interested. Mike's Mike's gonna figure it out, I think, fairly quickly, and he'll be fun to watch. Yeah, we've seen a lot lesser racers do well on the dirt once they catch on. Uh, let's jump into some fun videos of the week. It, you're right, Adam. As you said off the start of the show, it's been, I've just been pounding the videos in this week. I don't even know where we're gonna go. Uh, Spencer, just roll something here, and we'll, we'll talk about it. I don't know if he took them in order. Okay, this is the Savannah Bananas, Adam. I think we got to go. It's an off sun. It's an off Saturday. Check out this. This is, if you've not seen the Savannah Bananas, it's basically like the Globe Trotters of baseball. So they decide between innings they're going to have a baby race. Check this out, Adam. we got to figure this out somewhere to race track. Now you think the girl, thanks God, this one wrapped up. It's, it's going to pick up. Don't worry. Oh, one's on her feet. Here we go. Remember, this is full baseball stadium. we got to figure out how to wow. do the race. Hold on, it's it's gonna get really good. I think. What's this? Chocolate? You got chocolate? All right, I'm on the way. Look at the ones right there. Just reach out and grab mama. Just looking for some mid-race entertainment. What do you think about that? Cross the infield, baby race down the front straightaway, straight out of Weber Valley. That's pretty awesome. I'm yeah. asking you a dead straight question. Can I get away oh, with is... baby races on the front straightaway out no. of Speedway in July this summer? Why not? You really want to know? Yeah. You really want to know? Probably not. Because there's no finish line at Ashwick, and how would you know who wins? 
stepped yes. right into the diaper bullshit yes. on that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For going Eat to a the whole. finish line. Hey, I'm going to put transponders in every diaper, okay? We just got to make sure the orientation is good. I'm asking you a question. Exactly. Seriously, take all the jokes out. Can I get away with having a $500 to win baby race on the front straightaway at Oshweekin Speedway? Does it have to be grass yeah, or can we do it on the clay? Yeah, we are do off July clay. 5th. Kids love clay. I think we need to do it. We are off July 5th, Fran, and I think we might have to go to Salem's Field in Buffalo to check them out. Um, I measure the kids. I'm not getting into that. All right, next video, Spencer. Okay. Sometimes to be the best dad, you have to be hated by the entire neighborhood. Love it. Sometimes to be the best dad, the whole neighborhood has to hate you. He's racing his kid in the golf cart and the go-kart around the yard like <laughs> in a residential neighborhood all day long. <laughs> Turn it up, Spencer. Love it. Love it. Sometimes, to be the best dad, you have to be hated by the entire neighborhood. I love it. Dude, that kid just about hit the butt end of that wall. Okay, that's good, Spencer. I, I, I thought that was awesome. <clears throat> Quick story there. I got a picture I'll show you next week of me and Mikey in a home-built bed frame go-kart that Gary built us that the cops did bring me home one day. Said I was riding down the road. We knew we were doing hot laps on the sidewalk, officer. All right, what else we got, Spencer? Andy and I had our own channel between the two of us when he was crew chief for your dad. And y'all would talk amongst each other. We'd talk amongst ourselves. Yep. Full yep. Okay, so the pause truth. it right yeah. there, Spencer. How long the did that? In fact, I'm going to ask you back to the beginning. So this is Jeff Gordon's crew chief, Ray Evernham, talking about him and Andy Petrie when he was crew chief for Dale Sr. Now they were the biggest rivals in NASCAR at this time. And he's talking to Dale Jr. explaining that, oh, yeah, me and Andy, we had a we had our own little sub team among the teams back in the day. And Dale Jr. is calling, but he's like, bullshit. And he's like, I swear. So roll it now. And Spencer, I wonder how you feel with this. You're a big, you're a big Jeff Gordon fan, knowing he was riding with the black team the whole time. Roll it. Andy and I had our own channel between the two of us when he was crew chief for your dad. And y'all would talk amongst each other? We'd talk amongst ourselves. Yep. Bullshit. Yeah, that's the truth. Yeah, that how is long the truth. did that happen? Um, Just it went the... on for two years, and then Andy, you know, went and got his own his own team, and yeah. I think we did it for one more year when he had Schrader. But no kidding, one hundred percent. Yes, Andy, we had the three and the twenty four were almost their own little teammates. <laughs> no one's gonna believe that. <laughs> that's true. That that's one hundred percent true. Unbelievable. Yeah. I talked I talk to Andy on the box about pitting, and he talked to me about this and that. There was a time in Charlotte, nineteen ninety four, October at Charlotte. I built the shocks for the three car. Bullshit. That's true. One hundred. I was a crew chief on the. I was a crew chief on the twenty four and built a set of shocks for the three car. Unreal. But ninety four, we weren't going to win the championship. And I think your dad was in the battle with uh, with with Mark or yeah. or somebody. And and we were like, okay, well, here. Here. No kidding. Unbelievable. What do you make of that, Adam? It's not. It's not unbelievable, but it's just funny to hear them actually admit it after all this time. It, that's the amazing thing about our sport. I mean, Clint, we talk about it all the time, right? You talk about tech, you talk about racing, you talk about feuds and rivalries. People wouldn't believe the amount of cooperation there is behind the scenes and support. And, and you, you and I wouldn't even, like, there, there's shit that goes on that would blow people's minds. Um, oh, yeah. Ob, ob, some of the obvious ones are when someone's cast car hauler got stolen when they were down racing in Quebec and someone loaned them a car to go racing, things that you wouldn't expect. But even more unusual things, strange bedfellows in racing. What else we got? One more video. Let's see it. 41 of Hughes in second. He's under left. Wheel falls off, Hang left on. front. Whoa. Brian Nail has literally drove the wheel of that thing there is no left front tire on the six car he's looking now for the lead off of turn four whites out one to go uh you've seen Corey cruzman race with a ski at the chili bowl midget nationals you're gonna see brian nail make it into a transfer spot with no tire on the left front down the back straight away oh up the hill goes the 121 brian nail looking oh, oh so close to winning 
a big qualifier on three wheels. I there's some cool videos we picked up through the week. What you know what? That might be a great question for T Maz. Because if anyone's done it, I could see him having done that in his career. We got a couple more videos to come up later in the deal, but uh, if we're ready, bring him on, Spencer. Thomas Mezzerall, the famous T Maz, wing sprint car, midget guru, everything dirt. He's done it uh, pretty much around the world from, you know, New Zealand, you know, Australia. You've been all over the place, man. Welcome to the program. And this is a this is an assist to Robbie Longbow. Robbie's been bugging me for over a year now to get T Mez on. So, Thomas, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the program. Hey, thanks for having me. And I bet you that guy didn't even know his left front wasn't there. <laughs> Quite possible. Okay. That's, that's an interesting thought. You're, you're being serious? I I mean, those things are so twisted up in left front light. The way they race around there, it's right front down, left front up. You know, he probably was like, well, that feels a little weird. And, and, but it didn't look bad. <laughs> it, the car never nose down. Like it, it didn't look like they, they were ever lifting enough to make it dig in. Yeah. Hey, no, I was, uh, that was a good race. So, Team Ez is suffering from a broken collarbone this past week in a wreck, jumped a wheel with a lap car, if I'm understanding. Uh, I said you're going to be out for what half the summer you said uh, a few weeks. So what's the story on the injury? Where did it happen? And uh, how long do you figure you're going to be out of the seat? So we were at the uh, first race of the season here in Indiana. Weather just kicked off the No Way Out 40 uh, at Paragon Speedway. And uh, I actually went quick time, had to come out of the B main, started uh, i believe 18th and was going for fourth and climbed a wheel and went for a nice nice ride you guys probably can't see but got oh, some man, red geez. eye man, yeah. both eyes yeah how how many times how many times has that happened in your career honestly this is the first time but i climbed a wheel right i climbed his left front with my right rear and so like i didn't i honestly didn't see it coming and it kind of caught me off guard and uh, yeah, it, it barrel rolled about as fast as I've ever barrel rolled. So yeah, this is uh, the lap before. I get a pretty good run off the bottom, almost hit the tire like Shane Cottle. And I don't think he's coming to the bottom, but he does. Oh man, man. Yeah, it was it was brutal. Brand how, new how far car. into that? How far yeah. into that wreck do you figure you busted your collarbone? Because I can't imagine any of the landings after that felt very good. Uh, that was the issue. So it, it spun really fast. And when it hit, I broke my collarbone and then it continued on, you know? And so like, I'm almost crying until I pop the belts, you know, and I go from, Oh, to, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, no, it took, took a hell, uh, took a ambulance ride away from the track for the first time. And, you know, I've, I've done this several times, but uh, that one kind of caught me off guard and uh ended up breaking this collarbone i broke oh hey now uh my little my little device oh, guys, went astray no sweat let you get set back up it's all, it's all good man get that get that back up and running might have lost him there spencer sorry now we got you there we go no, you're good man ah, sorry about that you. it's your second <clears throat> it's your second flip of the week yeah yeah that'll you'll have that with this uh open wheel deal you know it's it's not exactly the safest you know sport in the world so i've been i was actually getting ready to run my first world outlaw show this weekend um and you know in hopes to go wing racing you know what what do you think how much safer is a wing sprint car than than what you do in your opinion. I mean, it's probably not. It's probably not. But I have flipped both. And um, when you go to flip the wing car, you know, the thing just slows down like a pillow. It's like a parachute. Um, if it chucks the wing, then, you know, you're going 25 mile an hour faster in the wing car everywhere. So then there's that, you know, downside to it. But So having said so, that, team I think the wing why didn't you make that... Why didn't you do it so? Sooner? 
Um, honestly, because I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm kind of blue collar, right? Where I, oh, sorry about that. I'm kind of blue collar dude where I feel like, um, I I'm racing check to check, you know, and I need to make a decent living and wing cars really hasn't been, you know, a place where I could make a ton of money because I'm a non-wing guy I live in Indiana. Um, I'm a half hour from Putnamville, you know, an hour and a half from Bloomington, I'm an hour and a half from Gas City. You know, all these places are in my backyard and I can go race there. It's it's 1500 two grand a night, you know, and that's kind of my specialty, you know. So it's been kind of tough for me to, to just leave the non-wing ranks um, because financially I just couldn't do it before, you know. Are you running your own program, T? Oh, no. Oh, no. All I show up with is some helmets <laughs> I bring a steering wheel and a seat um, right on. <laughs> I, and some GoPros. I do a YouTube channel and uh, yeah. We need to get you so, up to Canada. Everybody keeps talking here on what's going to take to get you to us weekend because we got one of the baddest ass dirt tracks around running 360 sprints and crates and uh, it'd be great to have you up. Oh, that would be so awesome. Um, I've, I've mentioned it to Glenn and he kind of just chuckled, you know, and, and I just kind of chuckle back because I'm just hired hired driver, you know. And um, but since I started my YouTube thing, honestly, like a lot of opportunities have been kind of been opening up. Uh, just got back from New Zealand, and it was I went there twice this year already because I really feel like the YouTube channel. You know, those guys love to promote their Western Spring Speedway, and um, it's all about the show and entertainment, you know. And so they they brought me down a couple times and. Um, it's fun to, you know, be a part of the show, you know, so I'd love to go down there and try it. I hear nothing but good things other than taking your equipment across the border. No, you can put your seat in your helmet. We'll fix you up. We'll, t we'll talk off air here. Adam, go for it. Talk about the, the, you're, you're not new to this sport. You were in it before there was social media, before there was YouTube, before there was many hundreds of thousands of people watching the Chili Bowl. How much has that changed your life, Thomas, being able to reach more fans than you probably ever imagined you could as a dirt sprint car driver? Oh, it's it's absolutely it's changed all of our lives. I think, you know, that we used to have a, a ton of fans in the stands and it's not necessarily that way because now, you, you know, all the streaming services and the conveniency of being able to watch it on your phone, you know, well that kind of helped start my YouTube channel because, <clears throat> you know, like I, I'm really, I'm in a good spot. Like I'm exactly where I want to be driving race cars for a living, but I was not making the money I wanted to, you know, like, um, and so I started the YouTube channel in hopes to sell some more t-shirts and, you know, just kind of give back to my fans. Right. Well, I feel like it's done a lot more than that than I ever thought. You know, I actually haven't even done very well with, doing shirts because i don't post it i don't advertise um and but you know what i'm busy racing and you know trying to live my best life and so sometimes that kind of gets pushed to the side but you know with social media it becomes um you you get all these these views and people you know wanting to sponsor you and it, it's definitely the new age you know uh let's talk about world of outlaws i, I talked to you when we spoke today to set this deal up you know, can we talk about the world of outlaw high limit split? And you said, oh, hell yeah, let's talk about it. So, you know, what's your feelings on the whole split there? Obviously, it seems like it's a battle over the streaming money. Um, well, what's your thoughts on how it's all going down? Oh, I couldn't agree more. It's all over the streaming money. And, and really, you know, like this is – this is the high limits trying to steal the outlaws pie, you know, Um the outlaws have been the biggest tour on, you know, this, you know, racing deal period. Right. So everybody looks up to the outlaws and then they come in and like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to steal some of your guys. We're going to try to pay them more money. We're going to give them all these, I, I can't even keep up with all the incentives and, and the way it's all going down. I just know that um, the world of outlaws ain't going down without a fight, you know? And I think they have some key players, you know, I, I feel like, the outlaw success has been, you can only go watch Donnie shots, you know, at an outlaw show. Um, and so now they're kind of thinning all that out with the, with 
high limit and, you know, who's actually paying to have them and, and all these, you know, crown jewel races, it's going to kind of change that. And I feel like for me, it's great, you know, because the car counts are down and if I could find myself a ride, you know, I could maybe kind of weasel my way in there and be one of the guys, you know? Thomas, one of the things that's so much fun about you is you don't hold back. And it almost always takes yeah. a counterpart. You all, you all, I'm not going to say it takes a villain because I think sometimes you are the villain. Who has been the best rival, yeah. the one that you could just really promote being pissed off at and, and get people excited about? Oh, it would have to be Cannon McIntosh. Uh, me and Cannon, you know, I think he took out – my teammate, he took me out. It's been like he's got me upside down or taken me out like four or five times in the last two years. And, uh, you know, it the last transfer transfer and the B main um, at the Chili Bowl, our biggest race of the year, and, and he got me on my head, you know. And so the saga continues. So you're doing them a big favor, though, as well. I mean, is any of that ever put on? Like, obviously, if someone's put you on your head repeatedly, you probably have a bit of a grudge. But is any of is much of it for the show? Uh, you know, more than oh, it I, is. I wish it was. No, no, not not part of the show at all. I can't wait to find this kid at a gas station and give him black eyes. That's how I feel about it. I don't yeah. know if we're not allowed to do that anymore, though. You know, you sure in the hell can't do it at the racetrack because. Well, that would not be politically correct. And, you know, like it's it's we're racing kids, but, you know, we don't have judges because we're acting like they're adults, but they don't act like adults. You know, they don't carry themselves like adults. They don't race like adults. And uh, yeah, Cannon, I'm looking at you and I'm talking to you, buddy. So you just made Adam's day because I was waiting for somebody to cut a good promo yeah. on this for a while now. That That's awesome. You know, uh. What what age should we be letting kids get into sprint cars? You know, this is a this is a debate as a manager I fight all the time. We do have kids, and there are some fourteen year olds that can hack it. There's some that can't hack it. What age should we be letting them race full full time with the quote unquote adults? It's such a double edged sword. You know, you got guys like you know Corey Day, um, Ryan Timms. You know, there's there's some absolute talented young kids that that were brought up the right way that had the right funding that have had all the right tools in place but um man i really feel like you you shouldn't be able to drive a sprint car or a midget until you're at least 16 um and even at that i feel like you should have it should be like i racing you have to run the 305s for a year and then mm -hmm. if you're a badass in a 305 yep it's open let's go or a D2 midget or something. But, you know, back started running midgets. You had to be 18. And so I was emancipated to run. And my parents told me, like, hey, don't get in trouble. You, you get in trouble for stealing or some dumb stuff, you're in jail. You know, it was very uh, crude the way my mom treated me after I got emancipated. <laughs> Wow. This, this is Thomas, like Gary. Who? Okay, so my dad lives with me, Tom. He's watching the show. He just brought up the sign, just dropped it on. He says, I love this guy. Because dad was a little take you to the gas station guy in his racing day, too. So go ahead, Adam. It, that's funny because it leads into my question. Who came before you, Thomas? Who, who did you see and thought, man, that's who I want to be? That's, that's where I'm going to land. Well, so I'm at San Jose Speedway as a kid. I raced quarter midgets, and we go down there. I was a big Mike Sargent fan, um, and it was kind of a rivalry with Katings and Sargents. Um, but then old Wild Child showed up, starts in the back, gets the lead, checks out, climbs a wheel lapping some cars, literally hangs this thing in the fence down the front stretch. It's hanging in the fence. Dude undoes his belt, falls to his head, gets up off the ground, and he walks out. Instead of going back to the pit area, he went to the car. 
and he got he he opened the gas door, got his keys, got in his car, and he left. And I was like, "This dude is awesome." <laughs> that was that was it. <laughs> Big wild child fan. Wicked. No, um, any budget, money's not an object. Where where are you going? That's a tough one. Uh, I'm probably going wing sprint car racing. Um, I love, I love our sport. You know, it's, it's the rawest form of motorsports. Um, I, I would definitely do a trophy truck. I think, I think I could do rowdy in that. Um, bucket list is always to go do drift stuff at like long beach or Atlanta. Um, because you know, those guys run it on the edge, but I run it on the edge with big risks. So I feel like I could do that too, you know, but it's just a matter of getting a car that could, could do that, you know, and you need like, Hey, Alex Bowman, your drift car, your Corvette with 900 horse. I need to borrow that sometimes so I can go get my FD license. Um, but yeah, we, I'm not friends like that with him. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe a Pikes Peak Hill climb. You know what? It's some of the stuff you're talking about. It almost sounds like how long can you race sprint cars for? Can, can you run sprint cars till you're 60 years old, 65 years old, or is some of this conversation, maybe what you see when, when you're done risking everything for, for what you do, maybe you want to risk a little bit less, but still have that thrill. So I actually posted a video about me talking about that. You know, I've had a lot of people like when I got upside down, my hands came out of the cockpit and I don't run arm restraints and I got people telling me that I need to give it up. And I'm like, I just got here. I'm living my best life. There's no way I'm giving this up, you know, but you know, I, I told my buddy today, you know, Sammy Swindell still wheels, you know, how old is Sammy? 65. I got 22 years, 23. No one that's, and that's why he asked that's, that's a great example. Um, Cause Swindell can still get it done, man. But there's others who, who, change directions a little bit you know racers are funny people they have different plans different thoughts in their head and this is a mental game like if someone thinks hey i can't do this once i turn 50 i gotta go get a day job or something but other people will do it until they drop i'm gonna do it till i drop i feel like um you know it's just in my blood and you know, my other option is to work. You know, I don't really have any other options, right? It's either racing or work a nine to five, making $600 a week. And, and that just makes me want to, you know what I mean? So I'm not going to do that. We're just going to, we're just going to slide or die my way at the racetrack. And, and hopefully I don't get hurt. Hopefully my friends don't get hurt. I, I don't hope Cannon gets hurt, you know, and, and hopefully we all have fun racing, you know, the most outrageous cars in the planet you know let's talk about you know have you done any pavement racing yeah yeah so i've run uh, i've run the yeah copper world i ran a late model southwest tour car ran a modified on pavement when i was 16 ran a late model when i was 17 18 um then i ran pavement midgets and i kind of when i moved to indy i gave up pavement to go dirt racing um right because pavement kind of kind of had died um but yeah i even i even did uh, i was like a richard petty driving school instructor we did like stock cars at kansas speedway and i did this srt program where it was road courses i've done all kind i i used to uh stunt street bikes uh, i bang wheelies for miles uh, i could roll like 500 foot stoppies i drove grave digger uh, I oh, launched Grave Digger once. How, how much fun was that? <laughs> it wasn't. Because when that thing lands, it almost knocks you out. It was pretty impressive. Those guys take the beating they do. Um, and I probably only launched the thing. I, like, jumped a bus. So it was probably, you know, 15, 20 feet in the air, 40 foot out, 60 foot out. And when that thing landed, it was like, and you're like, and trying to, no you know, just like get your, your focus back, you know? So. Wow. I wouldn't guess that. It probably wasn't. My, it, it was, it what was fun about it was you could drive it, 
you could drive it on rear steer only and the rear steer is just a toggle switch so then you know i'm out there just mashing throttle switching the toggles because the front wheels are are heavy and hard to turn gotcha yeah that's pretty wild i wouldn't put all that on you hey man now yeah. that you're a friend of the program we're gonna have to be up your ass all the time all summer long following up on your healing seeing how it's going sweet uh, you've been an awesome guest we certainly appreciate it uh, I think we definitely need to work on getting you to Osh Weekend so you and I will cross off some schedules and we'll figure out. we got lots of sprint car buddies up here. We'll find your ride. You bring your seat and your two helmets, and uh, we'll get you fed and, and, and lodged up somehow. Sweet. Well, thanks for having me, and, uh, you know, appreciate our buddy John for uh, making this happen. Robbie. No, it's all good, man. Robbie. Robbie, Robbie. Longboat. Robbie got us going. Robbie. And I love that you screwed that John, up because because I'm John never Robert, let him live it down. Teamez TV, got to promote that, folks. Do yourselves a favor and go. Uh, yeah, go catch Teamez on Teamez TV. Like you yeah, were, you were doing such. Uh, so yeah, go check it. Teamez TV on YouTube. Um, I have it. Uh, I have what Facebook. I, I really don't do anything other than the YouTube. My Instagram is Teamez Drifts because I like to drift my car. Um, and yeah, you go check out you know the Teamez TV thing. It's a lot of fun. Um, YouTube YouTube is an amazing platform. Everything you want to see is on there. You just gotta you just gotta search for it. We agree. And listen, folks, Teamez, you do such a service to this sport, kids. This, this is how it can be done. You don't have to be vanilla. You don't have to, you know, get out of the car and just thank your sponsors. And you can you can say what's on your mind and turn that into superstardom. So thank you for showing us that, team S. Hey, no, thank you guys for having me on. And, uh, hey, everybody out there, have a wonderful night. I'm out. Thanks, team S. From Indiana, Thomas Meserol joining us here tonight, guys. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for stopping by. Big shout out goes to Johnny Longboat for making that happen. That's going to be his new nickname now. He'll no, no longer That's be known awesome. as Robbie. He'll forever be known as Johnny Longboat. I love it because we needed something over Robbie. But Robbie's been up my ass literally for like two years uh, to get Team Ez on. And uh, what a great guest. Uh, yeah, Mark Shadow yeah. sent me the same thing that Brian Anacook sent me that Stan Pockypeck also won a feature at Merrittville running on three wheels for half the race. Really I well. I really enjoyed that interview, Clint. Yeah. It, uh, you know, he just got knocked on his head. Like his eyes are bloodshot, but he doesn't think, right? You ask him a question, and he just answers it. He doesn't go into his mind to think. He says what's on his mind, and and God, there's more people need to do that. Don't think, just speak. You know, you hear the name, you hear about the legend, you've seen the. Him cut the videos or be pissed off after a wreck but i think that personality showed me that hey man he'd be a great addition to something we've got going on this summer so we'll, we'll see where we can get to um sound advice for all racers this is um dave moody was on another show at the first segment show and he's talking about great advice for racers so if, if you got a young racer in your family, check out this video. Roll it, Spencer. My kid's racing carts right now, and he's really, really good. He's really good. And my eyes roll. It's like, God bless you. You love your kid, but he's probably not half as good as you think he is because he's your kid. Right. And then they'll say, where should I place him to get him to the top? And my answer to them is always the same. Don't worry about getting him to the top. Have fun. One, yeah, exactly. Yeah. One out of 10,000 kids racing go-karts is ever going to race in a NASCAR National Series right. event. Go bond with your kid. Go have fun with your kid. Go compete with your kid. Teach him how to be a good winner. Teach him how to be a good loser. Teach him the life lessons that he's going to need to be successful in whatever he or she needs to be successful somewhere down the road. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about him being the next Jeff Gordon because he's almost certainly not. I love it. Thoughts on I'll that one? You know what? 
you know, I was thinking, I really enjoy the work that Dave does. He is someone who made it all the way to the top. And Clint, I'll bet you he didn't think about it all that much. Like when he was up announcing ACT races for Tom Curley, I doubt he figured he was going to call Daytona 500 someday or his voice was going to be used on all sorts of different programs. Just loves what he does. And, and the opportunities came. It, it, you know what I mean? It's not that much different. He's absolutely I was, right. I was having a talk with someone else in the racing world yesterday. And they had said to me, you know, the first thing the guy said when he walked the door is, how much am I going to get paid? And, and I'm like, with any job, that's like, you have to love the job first off. And, and one thing, if anything, we've had the mantra of just do it. And one day you might get paid for it. We've never worried about how much money. If we did, we'd be firemen and cops right now. We're not in this for mm -hmm. the cash. If anything, I'm a lot poorer now because of racing. And I haven't even gotten a race car simply because we dedicate our life to this. I could have had a better job in a better house by now. But no, I said Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to the races. You know what I mean? So, and, and I think he's so on point. You know, just have fun with your kid. And, I mean, we've talked about it here. Mark Rinaldi would be the one to tell you, right? You know, if you're miserable, go buy a boat because I don't want to take your money at my house if you're angry and leaving my place miserably. We, you got to have fun. And, like, mm -hmm. it, it leads into that. If you just have fun and your kid happens to have a skill, You'll get there, you know, but th I, I had to share it because I've actually heard two different parents ask that same question to Ken Schrader while I was standing there with him last summer at different times. Because I, I, I mean, we end up hanging out with Schrader four or five times a year between the ride alongs and that. And I've actually heard him say it twice. And he basically says the same thing. Just go have fun. If the kids got it, yeah. they'll find it. A um, yeah. couple more videos. Well, we got a couple more minutes. First off, um, let's talk. Uh, World Racing Group tire situation update. They've kind of lessened the back door a bit. I don't have all the facts. And like you've taught me and Adam in, in good journalism, we've got to get two sides to the story. So we'll delve into that a bit more. But they kind of like they're 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 backing off it a little bit. Pierce says now he can race with them. I, I don't really know. But it's a convoluted, it's foggy. Let's just say that. Foggy. But it's well, and we learned Jr. a lot. I saw Ricky Thornton Jr. on the other side. So so what the hell? We can just do what we want now? So there are races who were pissed that it was being appealed, rescinded. I don't know what the proper word is, but uh, everybody do your world racing group, late models, world of a lot, tire situation, homework, and we'll talk about that next week. That's that's your reading for the week. Toys of all size, so let's have we, some fun. Go ahead. We learned how murky that whole situation was last year because it happened so close to our backyard. And it's not a matter of taking sides, oh, it was good, oh, it was bad. You learn all the things that can taint one of those tests throughout the whole process. And you're just like, God, why would you ever do that? Like, why would you ever subject yourself to running that test? It just, uh, there's got to be better ways. The boys at Epic Tech text me, Bob Bailey just said, amazing. Hell of an interview. We need to get that guy in an epic suit. So uh, Thomas Maserol turned heads here on the program tonight. Uh, G-Force Media Days. Let's roll on that, and then we'll have some fun with, with a couple toys at the end. Uh, G-Force Media Days. Roll that, Spencer. Uh, G-Force Media Days. We'll be filming these type of videos for the Ush Weekend Top Performers for 2023. And the APC registered a couple of the uh, super stock drivers at Ush Weekend April 7th, uh, 27th and 28th along with some interviews uh, near our weekend. So excited to get these pro videos done, get all our drivers looking good at them for the G-Force broadcasts on Racing America, Rev TV, and everything else we do. So I'm pumped. That's one thing, like, I just hope everybody realize what kind of investment we're making in the drivers this year. Uh, those are going to be two fairly expensive days, but I really think we need to get our drivers' personalities out so they can discover more people like Thomas Meserol that race you know, and get the inside scoop. So I'm excited about that. I think people appreciate it, Clinton, but not to the extent of the effort that goes into it. Right. I, I think they like how it looks. It, 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 you know, it's one of those things that, uh, 
Bad news just, travels a lot faster than good news, but we like how it looks, so it's good enough. For the last two days, I've been scheduling 70-plus drivers, so it's going to be crazy a couple days. Uh, the whole process should take about 20 minutes, less than half an hour for each driver, and we'll knock that out. But hoping to make them all look good, get everybody uh, ready for their TV close-ups this summer. Let's uh, let's look at some toys. Now, a lot of these videos I had, I'm, they, they weren't available. We can't share them private videos whatever but man just so many good yeah, videos you can, out there. we can do all of it spencer won't let us like don't sugarcoat it spencer's the one who oh we can't do this oh copyright oh that's not allowed <laughs> uh, yeah. spencer you're killing yeah. us <laughs> blame, I'm it joking. Spencer. blame it on the quiet guy I've, blame it on the jeff we Blame's haven't heard guy. from him I haven't. I don't even know if Spencer's still here. We haven't heard him in our ears, so I wanted to poke him a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I think that, that means best. he's paying attention. Jeez. Yeah. I was. I was just about to get blocked too because I was gonna say he's on the other side of the the room eating cheesies and watching Hogan's Heroes or some kind of shit. But uh, no, he's actually oh, here with us. Goodness. We appreciate everything you do, Spencer. Uh, let's look at a few toys. <laughs> Okay, so Adam, this guy's got a channel just taking his Evil Knievel lineup toy and doing massive jumps in his driveway. There is music to it, but it kind of sets it off. Did you have one of those toys, Adam? I did not. I did. It was the wickedest thing ever. You crank that Evil Knievel thing up, and as soon as you stop, it takes off. It's like a big gyro in there. Was that the only one, Spencer? That's pretty that's pretty there badass. Might be one more, but yeah, I had, a, I had a cool Hot Wheels video too, but uh, Spencer said no. So, now great show, great to have Team as on, great to have Mike Lichty join us. Um, you know, mm -hmm. two obviously. How often do we have a? <coughs> Excuse me. How often do we have a show with two guests we haven't had before? Right. Yeah, pretty rare. It's been a while now. We've been we've been uh, going back to the drawer a few times, but. Uh, no, good to have him on. Good call, Robbie. Uh, as much as I bust your ass, we appreciate everything you do. Got to send a shout out to all our racing friends. Still recovering, getting better. Uh, there's a few of you out there. You know who you are. We don't need to name you again this week. But we are thinking about you. That's for sure. And uh, we need you guys healthy and strong. Get ready to go for the season. Uh, yeah, Hot Wheels with the fire. It was the Hot Wheels with the fire guy, Richard. Guy, guy like Hot Wheels, they were going through twos with a GoPro. And I'm like, man, that, that like they say, if I'm rich, I won't tell nobody, but there'll be signs. I'll have, like, a giant <laughs> hot, hot Wheels, flaming Hot Wheels yeah. track out front of my pool. Um, anyways, thanks, everybody, for joining us on a Thursday. You know, sometimes uh, the real jobs and the, and the day jobs take over, and we have to shift things around. We appreciate you all finding us here on a on an off Thursday. We are close to racing season, bud. Are you ready? Ah, uh, yeah. These weekends have been hard on me. I, not, like, not like, oh, woe was me. I, they're just annoying now. Like, my God. Another two days with nothing to do? This is ridiculous. I love Dale Kalman, but tomorrow he's going to put up another, was it eight weeks tomorrow, post that I wake up to, and uh, just it's like a freight train coming. I love you, Dale. Man, the posts are good. They're well received, but, man, they stress me out so bad. You know what I thought was really cute? What? My, Mike Lichty talking about test and tune days. <laughs> just just cross them off your list. They, they no, don't we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it this year. What? We have to. What? Yeah. Who is this? Here, here's what I'm thinking. When was the last... Oh, out of man. the last 10 years, out of the last 10 years, how, how many practice days have, have we run? One, two, maybe. Yeah, and, and like you know, it is it is what it is. The weather doesn't cooperate. The grounds aren't ready. Whatever the case, I just uh, but which I, is weird. I'm no, I'm no weather guy and no farmer, but I want to think the table is a lot drier at this point in the year than it's imagine. ever been in the past ten years. Like normally, when I'm out there, like I was today, you will see like the rivers are still flooding. The, the water levels are super high. The whole water table, yeah, I don't I don't see it right now. Like yeah, it rained a bit today, and it's been raining the last couple of days, but. For the most part, I think we're ready. Uh, you know, we will be ready. We got a bunch of new signs going up. We're still selling signs like crazy. We've been making lots of uh, lots of stuff going on for G4 side of things. It's been great. Merrickville Speedway is just over two weeks away. 
Yeah, I, how, how did we not even get to that? They just hired um, Zach Ferry as a race director. So Zach Ferry got hired. Maybe we get Zach on next week. Uh, he'll be taking yeah. over for Doug Leonard. Um, and uh, Zach is in there, and to take his role in the pits is going to be Tim Zach. So Tim Zach is taking Zach Ferry's gotcha. spot. Zach Ferry's moving to the tower at Merrittville. Yeah. So uh, that's awesome. You know, Zach we got some different years. race directors we need we need to talk to. I know Jennifer Hatch. We got to talk to her, bring her on, talk about Legends Cars and, and her new role with that. Zach Ferry, we'll bring him on. Dave Hunsinger, we really didn't talk to to Dave for that long. So uh, there's lots we can do. Uh, it's going to be a great year. We appreciate everybody hanging out. Appreciate a bit of overtime tonight. Find us on the Thursday, as we said. But uh, it's great. My my rig worked after the first three minutes. We made it. Did you see it See it twitching a few times there? I just don't touch nothing. Spencer, new game. A little bit. The Zach and Zach attack. Oh, boy. Didn't we have... Didn't we have new equipment coming in the fall? Can we talk about it? But we didn't get nothing. Did not you get like a new not, I, no. no. Me neither. <laughs> Buddy, it's going to take more than a new camera to make me look good. So, what? Yeah, if? like learn how to position it. Your, your reading homework is go read up what headroom is. What does headroom You mean? know, yeah. Because you've got I an should, abundance earlier, of it. Earlier, I thought I had it right, and then we went to it. But listen, your your camera was ridiculous. Team was on, and you're Look. like this. Yeah, man, how's it going? Uh, great to talk to you. Everything good? Here's the deal. Spencer would have said something. I don't take my cues from you, Clinton. When it comes to that, if Spencer came in my ear and said, Adam, adjust this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Love it. And on that, we're welcome to, to it. The, welcome to the game. See you all next week. Hey, see who that was? Put that back up. That was Johnny Longboat right there, looking over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. Thanks, Robbie, for setting that up with Team Ez. Team Ez, Mike Lichty, Adam Spencer, everybody praying out. Ciao. It's wing time. Chicken wings. Here we come. See you guys.